The following KQED production was produced in high definition. Megan Wallace is taking part in the largest research project in the U.S. on the causes of autism. Researchers don't yet understand what produces this developmental disorder. At Kaiser's San Jose Medical Center, psychologist Thomas Crawford tests Megan by engaging her in different ways. The symptoms he sees confirm the autism diagnosis he made two years ago. Very rarely that she looked at me unless I actively called her name. Megan. Megan, look, look at me. Megan, look up here. When I tried to direct her attention to the bunny across the room, twice, yeah, at least two or three times, she couldn't follow my gaze. She didn't know the eyes are important for knowing her uh, intention. But right. when I made it with a more clear, with a gesture, look that, she was able to track. Look. A bunny. I need that. Megan is one of 900 autistic children nationwide who will help Kaiser and the Centers for Disease Control in a study called SEED. The research aims to unveil the causes of autism. We feel, my husband and I both feel that, you know, if you don't know why it's happening, parents aren't going to be empowered to make the best decisions they can for their, for their kids. Get them all, get them all. <laughs> Autism ranges from subtle to severe, but most autistic children have a very hard time following social cues. See, it's an airplane. They display repetitive behaviors and have difficulty communicating and interacting. Although a few medications can sometimes help, the like disease's symptoms are generally treated by working to modify behavior and improve interactions with others. Yes, you may. Okay, okay, that's it. In the 1990s, the number of diagnoses of the classic form of autism increased by 300% in California. And the numbers continue to climb, prompting officials to call it a public health crisis. 20 years ago, it was very uncommon to see children in the regional center system with autism. Today, uh, our regional center, for example, here in Sacramento, Alta California Regional Center, uh, is we're averaging about one diagnosis each day, seven days a week. Nationwide, one in every 158-year-old children is on the autism spectrum. The spectrum includes classic autism and two other forms of the disease, Asperger's and PDDNOS. Researchers are vigorously debating what this increase means. Are more children developing the illness, or are other factors like better diagnosis at play? Ron Huff, who is in charge of diagnoses at Sacramento's Regional Center, believes that at least part of the increase is a true increase in cases, and that it's not simply a case of more accurate diagnosis. Where are those older uh, 20, 30-year-olds that were missed 15 or 20 years ago that otherwise would have been diagnosed with autism. When we look into the community, um, we don't see those people. So what is making today's kids sick? While Kaiser works on its seed study, UC Davis is focusing on autistic children while they're still in the womb as part of its own study called Marbles. Today, UC Davis researchers are visiting the Newberry family in Citrus Heights, north of Sacramento. Hi. Hi. Hi, Megan. <laughs> Hi, big boy. Hi, Stephanie. Hello. Hi, Hayden. They've been following six-month-old Hayden since he was in utero. They're interested in Hayden because his five-year-old brother Jason is autistic. Hi, Jason. Come sit right here. Okay. Studies show that 10 to 15 percent of couples with an autistic child will have another autistic child. This unfortunate statistic gives researchers the opportunity to study these autistic children and their mothers from pregnancy on. The Marble study has so far enrolled 70 families with an autistic child. The idea behind this study is that if there are early factors that influence autism, we would like to be able to study them as they happen and not be trying to get people to remember, well, what happened when you were pregnant. 
and any significant events in his life. No. I was excited about the research project because I'd have more people watching Hayden other than just his pediatrician and myself. In this simple test, if Hayden doesn't respond to his name, it could be an early sign of autism. Oh, good job. Though autism runs in families, there isn't a unique autism gene. But Hertz Picciotto and her colleagues have identified 11 genes that act differently in autistic children. These genes are found in the children's natural killer cells. Though they sound like villains, natural killer cells are actually superheroes of our immune system that attach to and kill cancer cells and viruses. So what does this link between autism and the immune system mean? We don't know exactly how it's relevant. Um, is a change in immune function somehow underlying what causes the brain pathology? Uh, or is it the brain pathology that causes the changes in the immune system? Or is it neither? As research progresses, scientists expect to find that many different genetic factors interact with environmental factors to cause autism. In one case, it might be one gene and three environmental factors. In another case, it might be five genes, a, a child who really is genetically loaded in a sense, and a single environmental factor might tip the scale. And those environmental factors might operate at different points in time. We did this before. We did this in her second trimester of pregnancy. And we're looking for um, pesticides, um, any sort of yucky stuff that uh, mom, dad, and kids would be bringing in. Long dominated by psychological and later genetic research, the autism scientific community only recently started looking at environmental factors. But some parents of autistic children have long voiced concerns that the environment is involved in their children's disease. They believe that vaccines are somehow connected to autism. This belief has been brought on in part by the fact that 15 to 40 percent of autistic children start developing in a typical fashion and then regress. That regression sometimes coincides with the time period around 18 months when kids get their booster shots. After he got his last round of shots, I really noticed that he just regressed within the last couple of weeks, you know, a week or two after that, he had just completely changed. He wasn't seen anymore, he wasn't playing with the dog, he wasn't doing anything. I mean, he didn't even know how to be potty trained anymore. So we had to put diapers back on him okay. at about two years old. Okay, so I'm gonna do the Another source of parent suspicion stems from a small 1998 British study that suggested links between the measles, mumps, rubella vaccine and autism. However, most of the researchers have since retracted the paper, admitting it did not produce sufficient evidence of a connection. Parents also suspected thimerosal, a mercury derivative, used as a preservative in some pediatric vaccines. It was eliminated from all but the flu vaccine in 2001, but the rates of autism have continued to climb. Concerned about guaranteeing that infectious diseases don't reemerge, public health officials have insisted that research doesn't bear out an autism vaccine connection. But based on its finding that the immune systems of autistic children are different than those of typically developing children, UC Davis's Mind Institute has taken a more nuanced approach to the issue. The Mind Institute suggests that a small number of children may respond to vaccines in an atypical way. By and large, vaccines are safe and they're effective. At the same time, the number of vaccines that we give in a very short period of time may be too much for some children. And maybe it's because those children had other things that happened to them prenatally, I don't know. Um, or maybe it's a genetic predisposition, or maybe um, there's just some subset of the population within the norm that are at one end of sensitivity where, you know, 15 vaccines in a short period of time, um, you know, is, is not right, uh, is not what they can handle. It's now common for parents and pediatricians to spread vaccines oh, out over time. Nice. Thank you. For Hayden, as far as immunizations go, we have done an extended plan. Uh, he will have his immunizations up until he's four instead of two. I feel it's important to have him immunized. I would not immunize him. 
Both the Kaiser and the UC Davis studies will look at the vaccination histories of children and mothers, and they will also look at a whole host of other lifestyle and environmental factors. When was the last time anyone sprayed pesticides inside? Um, probably about six months ago. Okay. In the playroom and the bathroom. Okay. All the mothers ask, should I stop doing this, should I stop doing that? So we have to tell them, you know, you know, probably you want to avoid as much as you can some of the, the, the unnecessary chemicals. Research has already revealed some links. In 2008, Hertz Picciotto and her colleagues published that mothers of autistic children were twice as likely to report they had used household insecticides and pet shampoos. So we can't say at this point, well, we've established some ca causal link because that's not what we've done. We've just shown some evidence of, a, of an association. While the Newberries hope to contribute to the understanding of why children become autistic, when it comes to their own son, their focus is on the future. After Jason's first year in the local school's autism program, his parents are noticing improvements, and they're working to reinforce his newly acquired social skills. One of his goals for this year is to be able to answer a question, who, what, when, where, why? rather than just mimicking the question. What is that? Ooh, ah, ah. Ooh, ah, ah. What's his name? Monkey. Monkey? Ooh, ah, ah. Keep Quest free. Discover more and donate at kqed.org quest.